Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Feel Good Friday to you. Hello to all my YouTube peoples. Hello, Anita. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Jennifer. Colleen is in the house. Dropping links already. Hi, Susan. How are you? Facebook will be making their way in here in just a second. Hi from Scotland. Wow. Welcome in. Welcome in. Hi. I hope you guys have had a really good week this week. It's it's been a challenge this week. Has anybody else felt that way? It's been kind of hard to get back in the groove after Thanksgiving. It's been kind of rough, right? My kiddo is in here today. She's over here next to me sorting beads. So if you hear, you guys know that sound, right? If you hear the bead sorting sounds, she's over here sorting beads. And she just shook her head at me. She was like, yes, it's been a rough week. Has been a rough week. Oh, so good afternoon, Ruth. Facebook's making their way in. Hi, everybody. It has been, Judy. I agree. It really has. Nicole's in the house. Everybody's here. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we don't have quite a full house yet, but we will in just a few more minutes. My dog is also eating a cardboard box at my feet. I don't know why he does that. Hi, Kathy. He's fine. Just leave him alone. He'll just, he doesn't swallow any of it. He just, I don't know why he does it, honestly. And, and he, these boxes are always in here, but how's my thumb? Still bandaged. <laughs> Still bandaged, but all, all good. It's okay. It's all, it's all good. All right. So let's get started with, ew. It's going to spit it out at my feet, <laughs> shoot up pieces of box. Let's get started because it is Feel Good Friday. That's my favorite day of the week. And I am really excited to show you the kits this week because they're pretty awesome. Not going to, not, not trying to toot my own horn, but I really, really like the kits that were put together this week. And I'm hoping that you guys will feel the same way about them. There is one bracelet that is just stunning. Um, and then, well, I take that back. Both bracelets are pretty amazing. Everything's just really pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to show you uh, a really beautiful bracelet that's going to take a little bit longer than everything else to put together. So we're going to start with it after we do our maker mix. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what Feel Good Friday is, Feel Good Friday is exactly that. It's all about feeling good. I wanna send you into the weekend being inspired and not bogged down with heavy technique. You've spent the entire week learning all kinds of new things from not just me, but all the other amazing designers that are out there doing Facebook Lives and um, YouTube Lives. And so on Fridays, I like to take things down a notch, right? I want to give you some easy instant gratification jewelry ideas and everything in today's show would make a great gift. So if you're looking for some last minute holiday ideas, I've got those covered for you. Everything you see in today's show can be purchased over in my Etsy shop. And my team is always in the comment section dropping links so that you can just follow that link and go directly over to the Etsy shop. Now, that being said, I want to give you guys a little bit of an update because up until this point, it's never been an issue, but things are getting a little weird. <laughs> You know that old saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, you guys know that Facebook is notorious for doing that, right? Messing things up. Well, Etsy is kind of following suit, right? They're always changing things. There's a new app. There's just new stuff going on at Etsy. And one of the things that has become a little bit bothersome affects you and I. So I'm going to uh, give you the quick rundown of this. And this doesn't affect everybody. It just affects some of you. So Sometimes on Fridays, I have a lot of people who will do more than one order, right? Meaning as we're going along, they'll put an item that they're seeing me put together in their cart and they'll go ahead and check out because they're afraid that that item is going to sell out before the end of the show and they want to go ahead and make their purchase. I get that 100%. It makes complete sense to me, right? And when you do that... If it happens that you make two orders within a 24 hour time period, I have absolutely no problem whatsoever combining the shipping and then I will refund you the shipping overages. I try really hard to do that every single week and I don't have a problem with it at all. However, 
Etsy is not a huge, huge fan of that because I don't know, I guess it messes with their numbers. I'm not real sure what their issue is, um, but it's made, they're making it more and more difficult on the seller's end to do that. So without like going into all of the details, because if you're not an Etsy seller, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that when you do that, now it's harder and harder for me to combine that shipping and give you the shipping overages. So if it is possible for you to make your purchase all at one time, like to put all of your kits into one cart and just check out once instead of making five purchases where I can go back in and then refund you the shipping overages, try if you can. I know that's asking a lot because like I said, I understand the reasoning behind it. I understand that you want to make sure that you um, that you 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 can get something before it sells out. It's just it's becoming a little bit more difficult as the weeks go by for me to be able to to combine shipping and give you your give you your shipping back. So I'm just letting you know. Um, yeah, Dragonfly says I like the old Etsy seller app too. Yeah, it was it was much easier to navigate. Um, this one is a little bit more, I don't know, it's it's just fussy. And I'm sure they'll work the kinks out, but it's just fussy. And so um Cynthia said I just made three orders. See, it's it's hard. If you can make it all just one order, that would be really, really helpful to me and, and helpful to you. I know it's difficult. I know that it is, um, but I just want to be sure that I'm still able to give you your, your combined shipping. That's all. I don't want you to lose any money and I don't want to lose any either. So I know it stinks. It's just, it's Etsy just, they're changing things that they shouldn't be changing, but I digress. Let's move on. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the first thing that we do on our Feel Good Fridays is we always talk about the Maker Mix. And the Maker Mix is just little mixes of beady goodness, things that I have that I don't have enough of to make a full kit out of, but I still want to share with you. So if you purchase a Maker Mix, you can create a piece of jewelry using that mix, post it, and we will enter your name into a drawing to win a package of goodies from me. That's all. We don't judge your design. We just want to see what you're making. That's all. And then your name is automatically entered and you might get a chance to win some goodies and I got a lot of goodies to send your way so <laughs> you can ask the previous winners I like to fill up an, a bubble mailer of goodies so all right you guys so let's get down to business shall we I'm going to turn you guys around and we are going to get started all right so our maker mix for this week is all blue. I've got a lot of blue in the show today. So if blue is your thing. You're going to love today's show. All right. It is all blue and clear with a B, right? It's not just regular clear. It's the clear with the a B, which to me makes all the difference in the world. And this is filled with check glass. There are a couple of just glass faceted rondelles in here, but the, the majority of the rest of this is beautiful check glass. So there are some check glass lentils, that are drilled at the top. There are some drops that look like little water droplets. There are some rice beads in here, some check glass flowers, just a really, really beautiful mix of that AB and cobalt blue. Now, if you're feeling the cobalt blue, you want to stick around because I've got cobalt blue for days today. You guys, I'm about to show you a necklace. I'm sorry, a bracelet that you're going to absolutely love. So this is our maker mix for the week. I'm going to sit this to the side and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so with most things, when it comes to our Feel Good Friday shows, I try very hard to put things together as much as possible in advance just to save time. This bracelet, I can't do that. So we're going to do our best to get through as much of this bracelet as possible. And if we can't get it finished because it's taking up too much time, we're going to move on. But I do want to show you how to at least get it started. Okay. So in the shop, this is the cobalt blue bracelet. I did do a lot of the wire wrapping ahead of time, but even still, there is a lot going on here. So let me just go ahead and lay this out, kind of separate. That's going to help save a little bit of time for us. This is a cuff style bracelet, but it is a stringing project. And you'll see what I mean by that when we get this started. It looks like a cuff when you wear it because it's nice and wide, but it is very much just a, a strung bracelet. But we're going to use these little beaded sections 
to go uh, crossways. So you'll see, you'll see. So we've got lots of beautiful cobalt blue. We've got some gorgeous Preciosa um, check glass seed beads. We've got bicones in here in beautiful blue. And then these melons, these melon check glass beads. So this is a very beady project, okay? All right, also included in your kit is some 19 strand blue bead stringing wire from Beadalon. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I wish I had not <laughs> done it this way. So you've only got one piece of the bead stringing wire. We're actually gonna double this over. So let me show you what I mean by that. That's why it's really important that you get to see how this is started. So I'm going to take the bead stringing wire and I'm going to thread it onto a wire guardian. And then I'm going to move that wire guardian to the middle of the bead stringing wire. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to fold our bead stringing wire in half. So as I pull, I'm going to pull to make my two ends even. And that puts our wire guardian in the middle. Okay. So. I'm gonna hold that wire guardian in the middle of the wire and then I'm gonna take my two ends of the bead stringing wire and I'm gonna thread on nothing yet because I can't seem to get my ends even. I'm gonna thread a crimp bead on to both of those wires. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my gosh, it's just tricky because they're little. My thumb is bandaged. Okay, so it's going on to both wires. You'll notice the wires are running side by side. Okay, I'm going to bring that down and we're going to crimp. And just like any other crimping project, you want to make sure that your wires are not crisscrossing inside that crimp. You want those wires to be running parallel. Okay, you're going to come in with your crimper tool. And you're going to crimp, put that into the back notch to crimp it. And then you're going to turn it sideways and put it into the front notch and you're going to crimp it again. Okay. Now we're not cutting anything off because we need these two strands. So we're going to leave these two strands, but now we're going to come in with a crimp cover, which I normally do not use, but for this project, I thought they were important. So I'm going to place a crimp cover over that crimp and then I'm going to close that crimp cover over our crimped bead. All right, so now we've got one end that's a singular end. We can add our hardware to this, but we've got a double strand. So we've got two, um, two strands to work with. That's gonna make this look like a two strand bracelet, which essentially it is, okay? Before we get started with any of the stringing though, I just wanna show you these little guys are gonna go in between our beads that are gonna be running parallel. These are gonna be running in the opposite direction. So you're gonna take a eye pin, you're gonna thread on a bicone, you're gonna thread on a melon bead, and then you're gonna thread on a bicone, okay? And you're gonna do that until you've got 13 of these. And you're gonna take each one of these and you're gonna do just a simple loop on either end. So we're just gonna bend the wire right where it is exiting the bead. We're gonna come in with our cutter tool, trim off, and then we're gonna use our round nose pliers to grab that wire and roll back to create a loop, okay? So you're gonna do that with 13 of your melon beads. That's gonna use up all of the bicones that are in your kit, okay? Now, to get started, what we're gonna do is we're going to thread on some of these, I'm sorry, i pull something up real quick. We're gonna thread on some of these seed beads. We're gonna thread three of the smaller seed beads because you've got two different sizes of seed beads in your kit. You're gonna thread on three of the smaller ones onto one strand of your bead stringing wire and then one of the larger ones. And you're gonna drop that down and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna do three of the smaller ones. Okay, and then one of the larger ones. And that's just to get you started. That's just gonna to help to kind of separate out your, um, your two strands. Okay, now we're gonna do the actual string for the bracelet project. Okay, 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to thread a melon bead onto both strands. So a melon bead on that strand and then a melon bead on the other strand. Okay, we're gonna do a larger seed bead on both strands. Okay, then we're gonna thread on one of our little beaded connections here. It's got a loop on both sides. So one loop's gonna go on one strand and the other loop is going to go on the other strand, and we're going to bring that down. And when you do, that's how that's going to lay. Okay. Then we're going to do another one of those larger seed beads. Drop that down. One on the other strand. Drop that down. And then we're going to do another melon. So a melon. So actually Patriotic Beadworks, uh, Beadalon calls theirs wire guardians. I guess different co companies call them different things, um, but they are wire guards or wire guardians. And the ones I've got are Beadalon, so they are definitely wire guardians. All right, a seed bead. Okay, and then we're gonna thread on another of our little beaded sections here. So a loop on one, a loop on the other. Okay, and then another seed bead. So each one of your seed beads, you're gonna be using the larger out of the two sizes um, for the length part of your bracelet here, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> okay, so basically that's what you're going to do. You're going to do this the entire length. I'm going to do a few more because the end does not necessarily reflect how beautiful this goes together. And like I said, we're going to do as much of this as we possibly can. I just... I don't, I don't want to spend like our whole hour together just working on this because I want you to see these other fabulous kits as well. Um, but why did I do that? <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself there. Okay, so seed beads, right? And then another one of these. Okay. So a seed bead on both strands, drop those down. And then we're gonna do another melon. It really turns into the most beautiful bracelet. And I was so excited to be able to have enough of these melon beads to make these into kits for you guys. And there are earrings that match this. Um, so stick around. <laughs> because you're going to want to see the earrings that go with this too. The earrings are much simpler. Not that this is a hard project. I mean, it's basically just a stringing project, but I, you know what I mean? They're, um, they're not nearly as busy. I did it again. <laughs> I need to thread on one of these guys. Um, the, the earrings are a little more simple as far as the design is concerned. Um, so that the bracelet can still be the star, um, or you can just buy them separately. I mean, you don't, you don't have to have the set, but they do make a really beautiful set. I was really feeling this cobalt blue color. Um, and there is lots of blue in the kits today with the exception of one. So, all right, we're going to do another melon. Now we may have to do the abbreviated version of this bracelet. If I can't start stringing a little bit faster here. In other words, we may have to finish this off in tiny form and just pretend that we made the whole thing just so I can show you how to finish it off. Okay. 
So a seed bead on each strand. You like that nail color with that blue? I do too. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I really loved the red that I had on before, but it's definitely time for something different. <coughs> okay, now we're going to thread on one of these. So the loop on one side, the loop on the other. And then you want to put another seed bead on either side of that. That just helps to keep everything spaced evenly. Without the seed beads, the melon beads sit way too close to each other and it just doesn't sit correctly. So that's why you've got all of those gorgeous seed beads in there. So the seed beads um, actually were extras from um, a kit that I previously did with Danielle Wicks. So the seed beads are from Danielle and these gorgeous cobalt blue melons are from Sam, Sam's bead shop. So always want to be sure that I give both of them all the credit in the world because they are the suppliers of all the beady goodness that you see in most all of my kits. If it weren't for the two of them, I would not be able to put these amazing kits together for you guys. So and they're really, they don't skimp on the quality. I tell you that they always send me the most beautiful things to work with. I'm very spoiled. All right. So we're just going to keep going. Okay. We've got, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those left. I don't know. I don't know y'all. I think I'm pushing it with time because I've got so many other things to show you. And normally by this point, I would have already been through two kits. So I'm going to, I'm going to thread on one more little section here, and then I'm going to show you how to finish this off, even though it's not finished. Okay. We're just going to pretend like we did the full bracelet because I want to be sure that you know how to end this. Okay. So we're going to, another melon. Okay. Now I just want to show you. So since we're not going to be able to finish all of it, I still want to show you what it looks like when it's laying on your arm. If you're wearing it, look how pretty that is. It really just makes a really beautiful wide cuff. It's just so, so pretty. Okay. So we're going to pretend like we did the entire thing, right? And even though we didn't, we are going to, we're going to make this like a super, super short little bracelet, um, just for the sake of saving time. Okay. So pretending like we made it to the end, we're going to finish this the exact same way that we started it as far as the beads are concerned. So you want to finish off with one of the larger seed beads and then three of the smaller seed beads. So one, two, three, we're going to drop those down and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So one, and then one, two, and three. <coughs> We're gonna drop that down. Okay, so we've got two strands. We need to get those two strands down to one strand. So in order to do that, we need to crimp, and then we need to cut one of the strands. So we're gonna thread on a crimp to both strands. Okay, bring that down. That's gonna bring your two strands together. Okay, and we're going to use our crimper tool to crimp. Okay, and then we're going to put that in the front notch of the crimper tool. Squeeze. Okay, and then we're going to trim one of these off. So now we're down to just one strand. And we're actually going to put a crimp cover over that crimp. And you can do the crimp cover before you cut if you want. It's it's up to you. The crimp cover is acting funny. Okay, so just put your crimp cover over that crimp. Oh, I didn't get a. Mine's not looking too pretty. <laughs> All right, so crimp cover over that. 
Now you just treat the end of this just like you would a single strand because that's exactly what you've got at this point. So another crimp is going to go on. You're going to put your wire guardian on. Okay. And then you're going to go back down through your wire guardian and back down through your crimp. So you're going to treat this exactly the way that you would any other stringing project. It's the, the only thing that is different was that we had to crimp and cut <coughs> to get down to, um, to get down to one strand, right? So you're going to just pull that down. You're going to crimp again and then cover that with your crimp cover. And then you're going to attach your hardware. So you've got a jump ring for both sides and then your clasp. Right. So you just come in and cut off. And then you would go ahead and put your crimp cover. So this end is going to have two crimp covers where the other end only has one, but they're very small little crimp covers. So it's not like they distract from the overall design. Oops. I do want to mention that all the metal in this design is this beautiful hematite color, um, which we don't use very often, but it is actually one of my favorites. I don't know why we don't these little crimp cover. Okay. So put your crimp cover on there. I'm going to move on because we need to move on, but then you would just put your jump rings and your clasp at the end of that. Right. And makes the prettiest bracelet. So that is our first kit, right? Now I'm going to have to speed up so we can move on. Holly says that would make a beautiful choker too. It would, it would make an absolutely beautiful beautiful necklace. So, all right, that was our first kit. I'm going to move on to the others. So I'm going to scoot all of our leftovers out of the way here. Those are going to go into somebody's kit. They're going to take that apart. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Okay, so I'm going to show you the earrings that you could potentially wear with that bracelet that are also in this beautiful cobalt blue and this hematite color. So, what we have here, this is very uh, reminiscent of our maker mix as well. We've got some AB finished clear and some check glass here. So super quick and easy. We're going to take an, a head pin. We're going to thread on one of these beautiful check glass beads. We're going to thread on a check glass flower. And we're going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers, bend the wire over the top of the pliers. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, going up and over. Ro rotate your pliers so that you can move that wire over to where the pliers were before. And then you're going to wire wrap. Now, honestly, you could actually, with this kit, make two pairs of earrings. So if you are feeling like the um, this setup is too long, you could do an earring that is just th this section and an earring that is just this section, and you could get two full pairs. Or you can make them nice and long like these are. So we've got our wrapped loop there. We're going to take an eye pin. We're going to open that up with a twist. We're going to thread that on to the loop that we just made and twist to close that back. We're going to thread on a rondelle, check glass flower, and then a little bicone. We're going to do another wrapped loop. <laughs> Fuzz stuck to my bandage. Okay, so another wrapped loop. So bending the wire over the top of the pliers we're coming in with our round nose pliers again so you go up and over rotate and take the wire over to the other side and then do the wire wraps between the loop we just created and the top of that bead and then we're going to come in with our cutter tool and trim off Okay. And now all we need to do is just add our ear wire and these are finished. So if you want to have a little set, these definitely match the bracelet that we just put together. And then if you wanted to be extra, you grab that maker mix and make something else to go with it as well, because it's all in this same color palette. These are so pretty. All right. So I'm going to set these two to the side. 
All right, we're going to move on to the next. All right, next up is a bracelet. This is Colleen's favorite. <clears throat> and I think it is absolutely stunning as well. I, I always love a good two-strand bracelet. And this one is no exception because of that metallic rainbow that we've got going on here. So let me lay this out for you. We've got a connector here. This is a two-strand connector. It's already got one strand that's already connected to it. We're going to put together the second one. Part of it I've already done. We need to wire wrap the rest of this. So that's what we're going to do here in just a second. I just want to kind of lay it out so you can see where we're going with this because I don't want anybody to be confused. So we're just going to make a beaded chain. We're actually making two beaded chains, one for the top section, one for the bottom section here. And then next to that, we've got these chunky metallic quartz sticks and a beautiful rose. Those are going to go here and our clasp. We've got a really beautiful decorative clasp here. And then we are going to bring that down to a ring. And from our ring, I'm going to hang dangles because you know that's how I am. I got to have dangles with everything. So I've got some extra, these metallic -y beads that we're going to hang from there and just add our hardware. So you can see that this is where we're going with all of this, okay? Let's start out with our beaded chain here. So the beaded chain is four sections on the top and four sections on the bottom. And it's just eye pins and each eye pin has three of these rondelles. So two of them are already done. We're gonna do two of them together. So I'm gonna take an eye pin and I'm actually gonna go ahead and attach this one to my connector. So I'm gonna open up that loop with a twist and I'm gonna go ahead and thread that on to our connector here. And close that back, okay? So that's attached, whoops, <laughs> I can hold on to it. Attach it just like that. We're gonna thread on three of the rondelles And then we're going to do a simple loop. So I'm bending the wire where it is exiting the bead. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. And then use my round nose pliers. Roll back to make a loop. Okay, so there's our little simple loop. Then we're going to go in with another eye pin. Opening that up. We're going to attach it to the one we just created. Oops. Okay. We're going to close that back. And we're going to thread on three more rondelles. Thank you, Janice. That is so kind. I, I appreciate that more than you know. Okay. Grab that wire and we're going to do another simple loop. So bend the wire right where it is exiting the bead. You don't have to bend it over the top of your pliers. Okay, trim, leave yourself about a fourth of an inch of wire and then use your round nose pliers to roll back to create your simple loop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open that loop that I just made with a twist and thread on the two that I had done before our live here and close that back. So now, We've got our two strands for our bracelet, right? Now we wanna bring those down to a singular decorative ring here. So we're gonna use, whoops, we're gonna use some jump rings to do that. And we're gonna use these guys right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take a jump ring my other pair of pliers. Here we go. I'm going to twist to open, thread that on, and then I'm going to thread that on to our decorative ring. Close that back. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So jump ring, twist to open, thread that on, and then thread that on to our decorative ring. Okay. Now from our ring, we're gonna attach two jump rings. And this is gonna be where you're gonna attach your clasp. So a jump ring and then another jump ring. 
Whoa. If you need extra uh, length on your bracelet, this is going to be the best place. <laughs> I could keep everything together today. That would be great. I have, I have butterfingers today. Have you noticed? I cannot seem to hold on to anything today. I don't know why. Um, but like I was saying, if you need extra length on your bracelet, this is going to be the place to do it. So if you need to add anything, add jump rings right here. And that's going to help to make your bracelet a little bit longer. So that jump ring that we just added is going to be where your bracelet connects to your clasp. Whoops, maybe. <laughs> Flip everything around here. When I lost my grip on everything, I put that in the wrong place. All right, all right, come on now. Let's take it off and put it back on where it goes. Don't put it between your two strands. My goodness. You have a teeny wrist? I do too. I do too. Oh, thank you, Christy. Thank you so, so much. Okay, hold on. It'd be helpful if I could get everything lined up like it's supposed to be. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay, there. Never had so much trouble out of simple little jump rings. There we go. Okay, that end is done. Now we're gonna go down here to the other end because we're not finished with this, right? This is not a full bracelet just yet. We're gonna take a, a piece of wire that is included in your kit and we are going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm gonna grab the wire with my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna bend the wire, making a backward seven here. We're gonna come in with our round nose pliers. We're going up and over rotate and take the wire over to the other side and then you're just going to wire wrap so essentially what you're making is an eye pin with a wrapped loop out of the piece of wire that you've got okay so you're going to do about three wraps and then you're going to come in with your cutter tool and trim off the excess okay now onto that wire we're going to thread one of the smallest rondelles in your kit we're going to thread on our chunky piece of quartz. We're going to thread on another of the tiny rondelles and then we're going to thread on our rose shaped bead and another one of those rondelles and we're going to do a wrapped loop. Okay so bending the wire over those chain nose pliers up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side and then wire wrap. Come in with your cutter tool and trim off the excess. Okay, so you've got this cool little section here and it can go either direction. You can do your, your chunky piece of quartz and then your rose or, you know, it can go this direction, this direction, it makes no difference, okay? You're gonna use a jump ring to connect those two, this connector here, so through our wrapped loop and then onto our connector. <laughs> I'm about to give up today. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's not meant for me to hold things today. Okay. And then we're going to attach our clasp with another jump ring. So that's going on to this wrapped loop and there's our clasp. Okay. So all of that, it's going to come together here. However, because I am extra and I have to have dangles with everything, that's beautiful all by itself, right? I mean, it really is. It's just a really gorgeous bracelet, but I got to add the dangles to it. So I've got this decorative ring here and I'm going to use that as an opportunity to put dangles on it. Thank you, Stephanie. Now, listen, you don't have to do the dangles. You never have to do the dangles. However, if you feel like you want to, go for it. They're included in your kit. You've got the hardware to do it. You've got the findings to do it. This is also a great opportunity, just like any of the decorative rings and the designs that I do, is also a great place to personalize your bracelet or your piece of jewelry, whatever it may be. Um, if you want to, I'm just doing a wrapped loop here. If you want to add a personalized charm, you can, right? If you're going to give this as a gift, add a charm that means something to the person that you're going to give it to. Or if you're going to keep it for yourself, put a little charm on it here that is something just for you. 
Um, or not. You don't have to. I'm just saying it's a great little area to do that. All right, so we've got our wrapped loop to attach this. Phyllis loves dangles also. I'm all about a good dangle, a charm, a little flash of movement, some more sparkle. <laughs> I can't, I just can't help myself. So that one was our largest rondelle and a small rondelle. The other one is just this really beautiful metallic druck that we have here. And I'm going to wire wrap it to that ring as well. And then we're going to move on to the next design. Wanda says she loves the contrasting shapes and textures in this one. I do too. I do too. And I like it. I think it works really well. Uh, it works really well in all colors, but I think that it, it in particular works with this metallic because even though it's all the beads are in the same color, <laughs> they're also not, you know what I mean? Cause they're multicolored. It's like, it's like being monochrome, but not, and you've got so much texture and fun going on and it just does not want to hang correctly for me because it would make too much sense, but you've got a beautiful double strand bracelet here with your decorative class. So you've got your little dangles, you've got your chunky monkey beads here on one end. It's just a really beautiful little bracelet. I hope you guys enjoy this one. I think I saw that this one was, was already sold out. I don't know for sure. Colleen, Nicole, anybody know? <laughs> Let me know on that one, but it's beautiful. Love that. Love that. All right, moving on to the next. We've got three more things to show and I'm going to move on to a necklace project. Uh, this one also has a matching pair of earrings that goes with it. And this is just another really simple stringing project that involves some suede lace here. Some beautiful check glass beads and a reconstituted stick bead that's got some really cool colors in it as well. So is it sold out? Oh, that's awesome. Thank you all for your purchases. I appreciate that so, so much. You're going to love that bracelet. I promise you will. All right, so I'll get my bead stringing wire together here. So again, this one is another kit that also has some of that awesome 19 strand blue <coughs> bead stringing wire from Beadalon. You really don't see a lot of this in this design, um, but I had extra, so I figured I would use it. All right, so we're going to thread on a crimp and we're going to thread on a wire guardian. So the wire goes through the wire guardian, back down through the wire guardian and back down through the crimp. Okay, make sure that your wires are not crisscrossing inside your crimp. Come in with your crimper tool, give it a squeeze, and you're gonna put it into the front notch sideways and give it a squeeze, and then trim off the excess. All right, so for this project, again, just simple stringing, but all of the beads are what make this so beautiful. So we're gonna thread on two of the little metal beads, these little round ones. So there's, whoops, there's one, two. Okay, we're gonna thread on a Czech cathedral bead in this beautiful turquoise color drop that down and then we are going to thread on two of these silver colored disc shape beads oops where did that even go oh my goodness okay then we are going to thread on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of the check glass rondelles okay and they're so pretty. So there's two, three, four, five. We're going to do five more. So six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so there are. 10 of those. OK, 
Okay, and now we're going to thread on two more of these little disc shaped silver colored beads here. And then our stick bead. And that's going to be our focal. Look how beautiful that color combination is. Again, with that cobalt blue, <laughs> right? That cobalt blue. This time we're mixing it with some of that turquoise color. So pretty. So then we're just going to repeat whoops, our pattern. So two of these disc-shaped beads. Okay. And then 10 more of the check glass rondelles. Okay, so there are 10 of those. Two more of the disc shapes. One of the cathedral check glass. And then two of the little metal beads. So one and two. And then we're just going to crimp the end here. Okay, so we're going to slide on our crimp and our wire guardian. The length of this is going to come from our suede. So I'm going to thread on a crimp and our wire <coughs> guardian. And pull. Now you can run that through a bead or two if you want to, if it gives you a little bit more room to get in there with your crimper tool where your fingers are out of the way. I'm going to place that into the back notch of the crimper tool, give it a squeeze, turn it sideways, put it into the front notch, and give it a squeeze. And then I'm going to come in with my cutter, trim off the excess. Okay, so this is the front of our necklace. Absolutely it's beautiful. Okay, and then we're going to attach these to these decorative rings with some jump rings here. <laughs> This random wire guardian on here that I don't need. <laughs> All right. So this one's already got a, a, a jump ring attached to it. So we're just going to go ahead and open up that jump ring and thread on our wire guardian. <laughs> it wouldn't be alive here if there were not dogs barking at some point. All right, so I'm going to close that back. So that's attached there. And we're going to do the same thing over here to the other side. So wire guardian onto our jump ring and then onto our decorative ring. We're going to close that back. Okay. Now the length for this is this beautiful faux suede. Not real suede, it's faux suede. So you don't have to worry. There were no animals harmed in the making of this kit. Um, I've got this in two different colors though. Uh, it looks like the gray option is sold out, but the brown is also an option and the brown is also a gray brown. So um, don't, don't, don't think that it's an ugly brown because it's not. It's a very much an, a gray brown as well. I just didn't have enough of one color. So you've got two different choices as far as your um, suede is concerned, but they're both a very soft neutral. Okay, so either one of these looks really beautiful. We're going to use the gray to finish this off. I'm just going to show you. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to attach my um, cord ends to both of these though because this. Part of this will be some of these kits. So all I'm doing is I'm tying a lark's head knot. And you can just tie an overhanded knot. So I just doubled my suede, tying a lark's head knot to attach it. Probably want to come in with some hypo cement or a little dab of E6000 or some fabric glue and put on the back of that knot just to hold it closed. However, this faux suede lace grips really, really well. I don't think it's going to come undone, but just for some extra security. <laughs> A little dab of the glue will will be good for that. Um, and you're going to do that on both sides. So you're just going to take your, your piece of cord, fold it in half, 
take the loop where it's in the middle there, stick the loop through, and then you're going to tuck your ends through there and pull, and that's going to make your lark's head knot, just in case you don't know how to do that one. We do them a lot here, but sometimes people don't know how to do them, and that's fine. They're easy to do and keep you from having a big bulky knot. You can always, there's plenty of this suede in your kit though. You can always do like a barrel knot if you wanted to. Like I said, you can do overhanded knots. It's totally up to you, okay? So that's how you're gonna attach that to your decorative rings. And then you're gonna come to your ends here. And like I said, I'm only gonna do this to one of these because this is going into somebody's kit and I'll give them a fresh piece of suede to go in theirs. Um, but you want to come to the end. You can trim this off to make your necklace whatever length you want it to be. We're going to take your two ends together just like that. And you've got a fold over cord ends. You're going to put both of those pieces into your fold over cord ends. You can add a little bit of glue to the inside of that if you want to. And you're going to use your chain nose pliers. And this is always tricky. I hate doing these on lives because I'm afraid I'm going to mess them up. So hold it like that if you want to <laughs> do do use two pairs of pliers um if you if you need to to like get it started but the goal is to fold one over at a time just like that all right so you fold one side over and then you're <laughs> gonna fold the other side over and it's gonna lay on top of that one and you're gonna squeeze Mine are never perfect, but I'm okay with it. Okay, so you, you fold both ends over. Then you've got a loop here where you can attach your hardware. So you've got a jump ring and a clasp to go on the back here, right? And both of your ends are nice and secure. Again, I don't think you need the glue for this, but if it makes you feel better to add a little dab of glue to the inside of that before you fold those ends over, then definitely do it. But that's going to be the way that you finish off this beautiful necklace so all right that was our next oh my my nails match this one too <laughs> you can definitely see like what my mood is based on the colors that i use for things have you ever noticed that it's funny okay so i'm going to sit this to the side and i'm going to show you the earrings that match this if you are interested in having the set otherwise you can just purchase them separately if you want to another really fun pair of long dangly earrings that you could easily turn into two pairs of earrings if they are too long for you all right oh i love that ginger says beadsmith has a plier that makes closing the fold over cord into snap i need to look into that um Nancy says, when you design your bracelet kits, what is the average length deciding if I need to adjust? Um, it's usually about seven and a half inches, but I always try to include like extra jump rings and add a little extra um, if you need to make it longer. And I usually try to show you like where there are places where if you need to make it shorter, you can take something out as well. Um, but usually about seven and a half inches is what my goal is. Um, however, you can always adjust the length, like I said, by adding, adding a jump ring or two. It always makes makes things a little bit easier. All right, so these are our earrings. Again, with these reconstituted um, stick beads here that are just really beautiful and some more of that turquoise check. Now, again, could easily be two pairs of earrings instead of just one. If they're a little on the long side for you, you can definitely adjust these if you want to. But we're going to take our, um, our stick bead and we're going to thread that onto a piece of wire. And we're gonna wire wrap this like a briolette. So we're gonna take those two wires and crisscross them over the top of our bead. We're gonna take one wire and bend it straight up and down and the other wire, we're gonna bend it outwards. So we're making like an L shape here. And then you're gonna take that L shaped bead and or wire rather and wrap it around the straight wire about three times. Okay, and then you're going to trim off. Okay. And you're going to thread on one of these cathedral check. And then you're going to do a wrapped loop. So coming in with your chain nose pliers, bend the wire, come in with our round nose pliers. We're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. 
and then wire wrap in that space and we're going to trim off now you could just add the ear wire to this and call it a day right that would be that would be a beautiful earring all by itself not super long um, and then you can do the the ring and the other check glass bead for another pair of earrings if you don't want to add them all to each other okay but I'm going to make this nice and long because I love a big, long earring. So I'm going to take one of my Czech glass cathedral beads, thread that on to a head pin, and we're going to do another wraps loop. And then we're just going to put all of this together. Anita says that she loves long earrings, but lately when she wears them, they make her ears sore. And that wasn't always a problem. So... I understand that. Um, I know I go through periods where it's the exact same way with me and sometimes it, it goes away. Um, but I don't know if you guys have seen them or not. They make these heart shaped. I think you can get them at um, like Fire Mountain has them. I don't know what other, but some of the big stores where you buy findings have them. It's an earring back that is like heart shaped. And you slide it on, it, it, it'll even go on an ear wire that's like this. It just slides onto the back. And it keeps your earring from pulling forward. So it stabilizes everything and kind of redistributes the weight. You might try something like that and see if it helps. Um, it's They're made for heavier earrings, but I find that even earrings that are not heavy, if it irritates your ear, sometimes it, it just is too heavy for your ear. Um, everybody's sensitive, different, you know, um, but something like that might, might make a big difference. So you should definitely check those out. All right. So now we're going to just use some jump rings to put all of this together. So I'm going to use a jump ring. I'm going to thread that on. Yeah. And if you're feeling sensitive, it could be a metal allergy. Um, but I think you, it, there's, there's definitely a difference between it being a metal allergy and just a sensitivity to the weight for sure. You, you will definitely know if you're allergic cause that's, that's a whole different feeling. All right. So I'm going to thread that on and then, but a metal allergy like that can come on at any point in your life. It's really weird how that happens. Okay. So there's the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing up here to the top, but we're going to use our, um, our check glass bead. So thread that on and thread our check glass bead on and then close this back. <coughs> I know that those back things that I was talking about, it used to be that you could only get them like as seen on TV, but like they really do work. And so now you can get them where you can buy jewelry findings. Um, and I know I've seen them at like Fire Mountain Gyms on their website, but I'm sure that there are other places that have them as well. And I think they're really, really helpful. All right. So I'm going to thread on one more jump ring. That's going to be our go between jump ring for our ear wire. And then I'm just going to thread the ear wire on, close that back. And these earrings are done. And again, I know I said it a million times, but I'm going to say it again. I know this is a really long pair of earrings, but it very easily could be turned into two pairs. And you absolutely can reconfigure these however you want to. You don't always have to put them together the same way that I put them together. But they do match. They're really cool necklace that we just put together. They look awesome all by themselves, but they look cool as a set. Totally up to you. Both are available in the shop. All right. I've got one more thing for you guys, and then I'm going to let you go. We're right at the hour mark. So turned out pretty good with time here. So I've got one more pair of earrings and I believe that these are sold out. But for those of you who did get them, I'm still going to show you how to put them together just so you know. So these are just some little wreath earrings with some crystals and some check glass leaves. Uh, definitely not in blue, but I've got, I've got uh, Christmas on the brain. So that's what we've got here. So we're going to take our piece of wire and we are going to thread on one of these weird shaped crystals. I don't even know what you call that. <laughs> and a bicone, another one of those weird shaped ones, and then a red one. Okay. And then we're going to repeat. So that funny shaped bicone, funny little shape, 
and red. And then the funny shape by cone, funny shape and red. And we're going to repeat that one more time with the green ones. Okay. And you're going to drop all those down and bring those to the middle of your wire. Then you're going to take your two wires and you're going to bring them together and crisscross them. And at first it's not going to make a circle. Don't think it's going to make a circle. You have to do the circle part yourself, but you're just going to take those two wires kind of like a twisty tie and just kind of twist one of them to the back and hook it. Then before you do your wire wrapping, you can go ahead and shape this into that round wreath shape that you want. Or maybe you want that teardrop shape. I don't know. But I like to keep mine round like a Christmas wreath, right? And then I'm going to take that wire that I moved to the back. Thank you, Erlene. Thank you so, so much. And I'm going to wire wrap. And I'm just kind of making like a little messy, a messy little wire platform here. I'm not even doing like a really pretty wire wrap, but it's up to you. Okay, I'm going to come in and trim off. Thank you so, so much. Okay, and then I'm going to thread on my check glass leaf. I'm going to do a wrap loop and call it a day. And actually you can do just like a, you could do a simple loop. Let's do a simple loop on this one. This one's got a wrap loop. This one we can do just a simple loop. Why not? Is it either one is going to be fine. So just bend the wire where it exits the bead. Come in with your cutter tool, trim off. <laughs> Robin says, I want this funky shape in all colors, right? I, I wish I had more. I don't even remember where I got them, to be honest with you. And I have no idea what the shape is called, but they're pretty cool. I got them last year to make little Christmas trees with, and they made really cool Christmas trees. And this year I'm using them for wreaths and I used up the last ones. Um, all right. So last but not least is to add our ear wire to it. So I'm just going to add that to our loop. And that's it. So there's one with a simple loop. Here's one with a wrapped loop. So either or works. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. But really cute little Christmas tree wreath earrings in that classic red and green. I thought those were fun. All right, cool, you guys. That's it. We made it. We made it through the end of a another fantastic feel good Friday show. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to do a quick overview and then I'm going to let you guys go so that you can get on with the rest of your Friday. Don't forget if you are a hardwired member, we will be meeting today at 5 p.m. for our weekly wrap up and a fun little project. We're working on a wire weave that we did on Tuesday and today for our weekly wrap up, we're going to turn it into a ring. So don't forget to come and do that. And Thank you to all of our new members to Hardwired because we've been open for enrollment and looking forward to getting to know all of you guys. All right, so I'm going to do a quick rundown here. All right, so we have our, our wreath earrings. I, I love these. I got to get some more of those beads. They're so pretty. And that sparkle is everything. So, so pretty, right? All right, the last pair of earrings before those that we made were these guys. Really cool. Can be turned into two separate pairs <coughs> if you want them to be, right? And they match our necklace. Let me grab a bust. Go with our necklace project that we did today. Just really cool. Just that one stick bead. And it's the colors. For me, it's the color combination that does it. I think that that it just, I don't know, it didn't need anything else. Then you got the cool earrings to go with it. Even the rings match. Like that's a really cool little set. So, all right. So there's that. And then we had our cobalt blue earrings really pretty again could be two separate pairs of earrings those match our beautiful bracelet that we did the abbreviated version of but as you can see how pretty that is 
Again, another really pretty set. And don't forget, this matches the Maker Mix for this week as well. And then last, but certainly not least, is our metallic bracelet. So we've got our double strand metallics, our decorative ring with our little dangles on it, and then our little chunky monkey piece of quartz with our rose and our decorative clasp. Just a really cool bracelet design. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed these projects. Thank you so much for all of your purchases in my Etsy shop. I appreciate it so, so much. You help me keep the lights on and uh, being able to continue to do this for you guys every week. I'll be back next week on Tuesday at 1 p.m. with another fun project for you guys. And then, of course, on Friday at 1 p.m. for our Feel Good Friday show, as always. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you guys. I don't think so. I think up until Christmas, our schedule is just going to stay the same as normal. So, uh, same time, same place for all of us. And then of course the holidays always kind of throw things off a little bit, but I'll keep you posted when we get closer to that point and let you know any schedule changes that we've got going on. Again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your Friday. I appreciate it so much. And I hope that I have inspired you. Um, Feel Good Friday is over, but don't forget Hardwired at 5 p.m. I'll be seeing members of the Hardwired group then. The rest of you have an amazing rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys again next week. All right? Bye, guys. <laughs>